like to introduce Reverend Carol Zukowski to lead us to trust, to lead us in our prayer and meditation. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. <laughs> I'm just so happy to be here and um, see all my friends, and there are a few people I don't know very well, but my goodness, we all joined together today um, to bring something good forth in our own lives, in the lives of others. So um, today it's calling all angels, so I'm going to do an opening prayer. And um, for me, prayer is important when it drops past the mind and into the body. And um, I invite you to bring your attention to your heart, to your belly, to your full body. And if you want, just you can close your eyes. And we're going to actually call the angels in now. As we gather here together today, we are blessed by the mystery of life and love itself, by the mystery that is given to us by the God, the divine energy that is the all in all. And right now, we are going to dive deep into the mystery and feel in our hearts, in our bodies, in our souls, that we have connections beyond what we can see and feel with this body. Right now, if you can feel into and imagine, we are completely surrounded by angels. Man, mano y mano, hand in hand. They are holding hands, encompassing this room, blessing this space. They are standing with us. They are here for our wholeness, for our heart's desire, for our healing, for the people that we care about, for all things that we walk with in our life. The challenging and the glorious. So in your own heart, feel into the angel that is here for you today. Is it someone that you love that is no longer here? Is it an ancestor of any sort? Maybe you don't even know. Is it the wisdom keepers, the archangels, or the guardian angels? Or maybe all of them. All I know is that there are legions of angels here. And we are amongst them. We are the bringers of the light and the message itself. And taking in a deep breath, put your hand on your heart and acknowledge the angels have arrived. your mystery eyes open. <laughs> anyway, I actually have a tear in my eye. Sometimes we get touched. We don't have to know what that's about. Um, we are living in a glorious mystery. Um, when, I, when Dean asked me to speak, um, I thought, it just came to me calling all angels. And if you've been around and you know the um, rock and roll musical group Train. <laughs> it's a beautiful song, and um, I didn't think of that right away, but I'm sure, you know, I love music, that that was a part of it. But calling angels is important to me. I think that I wanted to speak about this because in my own private self, within myself, I am playing with this idea all the time. I need my angels. I, I need that support. Um, and even in my private walking, sometimes I want to share that, and I call them my angels. So anyway, t 
today I wore my costume. <laughs> I think all clothes are costumes, so I wore my, my angelic costume. But I wanted to tell you a funny story. So um, one of my dear teachers and friends, <coughs> Dr. Riggerman, who um, was my professor at the University of South Florida, um, was just the most wonderful mensch of a Jewish guy that I knew. <laughs> and he was funny, and he was irreverent, and he was holy. Mm -hmm. He was holy present. <laughs> he is someone that showed up in my life like an angel all the time. When I was a student, um, I was in a car accident and uh, taken to the hospital and, you know, you lay around on the gurney forever. And finally I called him and I said, Dr. Ritterman, would you come and get me? Because he was up in that area. Sure enough, he came in with his old truck <laughs> and pulled in. And come on, Carol, we're going to call the, uh, the lawyers right now. <laughs> <laughs> just wonderful. But anyway, the story is, um, he was my professor and it was uh, test day, exam day. So um, I went up to see him before and I had an amazing story to tell him. Um, well, it was actually the day before the test. And I, I went up and I said, Dr. Ritterman, oh my God, I saw an angel. Now, he was left hemisphere dominant and not really interested in hosting that kind of thing, but he, he liked me. He's like, well, tell me about it. And I said, well, I work at JCPenney, and I was on the, the night shift. We were closing up at 9 o'clock at night, and I was straightening the men's shirts. I was ordering them, the blues with the blues and the greens with the greens. And I'm just in it. There's like a little music, and I'm doing my job. And I look up, and I, I was a good little hostess for J.C. Penny, and I always ask people, can I help you? And there was this really tall man, mm -hmm. and I mean exceptionally tall, like I had never met anyone that tall. I don't know, felt like close to seven feet, and he was dressed in white. Mm -hmm. He had a white suit on, like in Florida, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, complete, he was a sight to behold. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, well, can I help you? I thought maybe he's shopping for shirts or something. He didn't say a word to me. He just kind of acknowledged me. And then he walked over to where the escalator was. And um, I saw him get on, and he was so tall. I saw him go up that escalator, and you know where the wall comes down? He disappeared. Oh my God, I got on the phone really fast and my friend who was right there at the end, at the cash register, I said, you got to get a, get a load of this guy. I think we have an angel in the house. And she said, Carol, I am looking. There is no one here. So I called all my friends in the store and they all looked for this tall, beautiful man. He was not there. I don't know. I have chills now because was that my guardian angel? I don't know. Was that an archangel? Was that... It didn't matter. Something in me was moved. Something in me was shaken alive. So what are your angels? I mean, do you call on something? I know we, we, we pray and we talk to God and Jesus or whoever you are bringing your attention to. But who do you call on? Do you have a conversation? When you are like really challenged, do you take time? Do you take time? Yeah. Anybody else take time to talk? Even though it maybe doesn't make sense to you and maybe if someone saw you, you wouldn't do it out loud, but within yourself. See, I grew up in um, Catholicism and we had guardian angels which I know a lot of you grew up with, and archangels. Those were real to me. We color, we did coloring pages. Mm -hmm. I know what Archangel Michael looks like. <laughs> 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 and, and, and Gabrielle. And, and I learned about those archangels, and it was such a comfort to me being up in a little girl. But I grew up with them. And I always knew I had a guardian angel. Mm -hmm. And... It, I felt that. I felt protected. So I have another
got a story for you. Um, so sometimes you forget you have angels. <laughs> sometimes you're moving along and you just feel kind of alone or caught up in maybe your own stuff or your family stuff or politics, whatever it is, <laughs> wherever you're caught up. So I was um, a speech therapist in a clinic, and there was a young girl who was uh, maybe four and a half. And she had been my client for three and a half years. I knew her since a baby. She couldn't speak. But when I was with her, I just fell in love with her, and she fell in love with me. Her name was Carmen. And her mother and her sister would always come drop her off, and I would play with her, and that's how I learned to teach her to speak is that I would get down to wherever she wanted to play and we would go there and then I would encourage her to make sounds and vocalize. Anyway, at four and a half, she was a good speaker and we had fun together. Mm -hmm. We had a really good time. It was the end of the session and we went outside and um, I was talking to the mom and the sister and Carmen was in front of us walking into the parking lot. Well, there was a curb there, one of those yellow curbs and she, she didn't have a lot of coordination. As a matter of fact, she didn't have that protective thing that you have that when you fall, you pull, put your hands out or protect yourself. It, she was wired differently. She didn't have that. So I looked over and I watched her in slow motion. <laughs> you know how that is. She tripped over with no protection. This beautiful little girl face planted. Mm -hmm. I watched it. So while she was doing, of course, in slow motion, I am yeah. reaching for her and grabbing her. I pick her up and I'm like, like scared. And I look at her and she's just smiling at me, yeah. nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. There wasn't a scrape on her. Wow. All I could feel is that there were any, there was an angel there. Mm -hmm. Something had caught her face and her body. To stop it. I don't know. Maybe there's another description or idea about it, but it doesn't matter. For me and for that family, we were in gratitude. We were thanking God for whatever happened in the mystery. We're accepting it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. More of that. See, we're all energetic beings. And, um, Nikola, Nikolai Tesla talks about us, the components of this dimension as energy, vibration, and frequency. All things in our universe and even in the multiverse that we can understand. We are that energy down to the smallest aspect, down to the particles of what we are. And we are vibrating all the time. And in that vibration, we determine what we're going to see by what we're open to. So right now, when I come into this place, I feel like it's a very holy space here. It's always so lovely and loving people here. And there's these large windows for those of you that can't see, but outside the windows is the greenery of the woods that surround here. That has vibration. And if you have any relationship with chakras, that green chakra is the heart chakra. And I can feel an upliftment when I drive up the, the driveway all the way up here and I start to merge into the space. I allow myself to rest in some sort of heart embrace. So what you are choosing matters. So I had this other experience, um, and it was at the Dream Maker. And I want to see what the, the little machine was called, because it was interactive video system. <laughs> um, anybody go to the Dr Dream Maker where they measured your chakras? Okay. Well, they don't have it anymore. I'm sorry. But if you oh, own it. No. <laughs> but I think that it might open up again, and you'll have an opportunity. If not. This was so cool. You know, when I say that I'm uh, um, interested in spiritual uh, biology, what I'm saying is that there's a lot of mystery that's being revealed right now as 
plausible and believable and proven by science. So we're going to integrate some of that. This one's on the edge because a lot of my professors probably would scoff at it. But I was interested, and on my birthday, right before COVID, I went in there, and a friend of mine was tending shop. So I said, hey, would you let me do the thing? I'll pay for it. And so we went back there, and you put your hand on some sort of device that reads your relative energy. And then there's a screen, and you can see the colors of your body. And it's real time. It's changing. So you can see, like, maybe this area was bluish and a little red, and there was all kinds of colors. And what I did is I experimented. So as I was thinking, I could see, like, my colors going up and down. Now, what they usually do is take a photo, and that's what you get for your money. But she was my friend, and I said, can I play? And she said, yes. So I played. I was so delighted. I want this at my home, really. So I was playing with it, and I started to relax myself and bring myself from my head down into my heart, just bringing it with breath and my belly. And I could feel myself in my body, and my hand was still there. And when I looked, I had calmed down. All of my energy fields had evened out. And the colors had organized in a different way. But I could feel a sense of peace. And I, I felt like there was a correlation. I felt like this was really, at some level, it was working for me. So at the very end of it, I, I had a curiosity about crystals. And so I said, could I grab some of your crystals? <laughs> I really did push it a little bit there. <laughs> and I went out and I got the biggest quartz crystal I could. And I also got the biggest amethyst I could. So my idea is, we, if we are energetic beings, we can amplify our energy. And, you know, if you have that kind of curiosity, you probably have taken your crystal or whatever and put it with you, and maybe you felt something or not, but I, I just wanted to experiment. So I pulled up this crystal, and I did a quartz, and I had all kinds of changes, but I was attracted to the amethyst. So we all have our attractions, right? I went with my gut. My intuition, I got that in my head. <laughs> and I put it by my heart, and I left my hand there. And I said, can I have an experiment and call in some people that have left? Mm. And she said, oh, yeah, you take all the time you want. <laughs> so I did. And I, I had lost a young girl that I had worked with for 15 years that was in a horrible car accident. She had no way to communicate with anybody except me. I could read her energy. She passed away, and I wasn't any, I hadn't seen her in a couple years, but she was a teenager, and um, I just wanted to connect with her, and even if I didn't see anything, I wanted to do a little prayer, so I said, Elizabeth, I love you, I miss you. The moment, the nanosecond, I said, Elizabeth, a bubble came in, like a colored bubble into the field that I'm watching, I was like, Oh, okay. And so I talked to her. I love you. We had so much fun together. I wonder what it's like for you. And then I thought about my godmother that had just passed away that I had no closure about. I was still brokenhearted. And I called in my Aunt Judy. Aunt Judy. Boom. In there. So I have two bubbles now, and they're moving all around. And I'm feeling connected. I'm having full chills. I talked to my aunt. And I got the feeling that she's okay. Mm -hmm. She's fine. Mm -hmm. It was so healing to be there. So I called in my guardian angels, my grandmother and grandfather Zakowski. Because they are up the moment I call. I always can feel them. They will be with me. Two more bubbles come in. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, folks. For me, I felt I got calibrated to the angels. I have no doubt within myself that we are in a mysterious field. And what we can see with our eyes is so limited. So when you can close your eyes and be open, see in the quantum field, there's infinite potential and probability. If you can allow yourself to be a receptor or receive, 
and use your imagination to conceive there's something going on that you really don't know about, but you are willing to be grounded and receive it, I think there's all kinds of surprises. So that calibration was so important to me. So I called. I had a call to calling all angels. I call angels now since that time every day, all day long. Because there's moments of frustration. There's times you're speaking. <laughs> Definitely calling the angels. Um, hard things in the family. Um, children not well. Um, things going on in the community. And even things that are joyful or exciting, like you becoming a musician that your heart has always called you for. So the, if, if you call in the angels, Whatever that is for you, you will learn. You will start to be open if you will entertain the angels. Now the angels is nothing more than the vibration of the light within. So if an angel is a messenger of God, and an angel is a messenger of light, we are light beings. So how do we connect? Well, we are really these bodies. If you really look at us in the quantum field, and by science, we aren't, we aren't really here. We're much more space than physical beings. What if you are vibrating at a frequency that wants to be tended? That you have a dream. You have um, something that you'd like to try. And you're afraid. Well, maybe you can start talking to yourself and bringing in the angels. Maybe you need to call in your ancestors. For some people, that's really good. Call in your guardian angel that's been with you as a child. There's so many ways you can call it in. Find out what that is for you. Oh, I wanted to tell you this story. I actually wanted to bring slides because I was so blown away by this. But um, just to move on with the biology, biology of belief, biology of science. Um, do you guys all know it's called Mas his name is Mas Masaru Emoto Masaru Emoto oh, sorry. Um, he's the one that um, looked at water distilled water um, under a very powerful microscope and could by the word that was put on the, the label on the water he pulled out the water and um, looked at the what the water looked like underneath the microscope. And what he found is words like peace, harmony, love, gratitude were beautifully symmetrical in form. They were beautiful to look at. And words like hate, anger, and greed were these broken um, like crystals. They, they didn't look like they were formed. They were hard to look at because they weren't uh, in a symmetric, symmetrical way. The words that we use, if we are energy and we are water, you know, our bodies are water, our container is water, what we say matters. So what are you saying to yourself? How are you calling in your angels? How are you calling? Because if you're feeling a little bad and maybe you're talking badly about yourself, if you can remember to stop, and remember what a sacred, precious being you are. You can change your language to re-up your system, re-up your soul, re-up your heart. Um, I watched What the Bleep Do You Know? Did you guys ever see that? Now, it's an old film, and I've watched it five times, but last night I watched it again. And Marley Maitland plays the main character. And at, the, at some point, she's going through, she had a horrible breakup, and she's very angry. And at some point, she's looking at herself in the mirror, and she says, I hate you. You are so ugly. And she's saying this, but she had a moment where she stopped. And she got like an eyeliner, and she started to put hearts all over her body. And as she was doing it within herself, I love you. You're beautiful. This is amazing that we're here. What a shift. I mean, just 
to watch it. That's why I wanted to see it. I wanted to see it. How does it look? So there's this um, gentleman that worked off at Emoto, and his name was, I have to look it up, Ricardo Puji, and he was from Portugal. Now, why I want to say this is because whatever angels are, sometimes they can show up for you. Um, so he took this information, and he was he uh, was a cinema photographer. He made movies, but he loved the emoto work. So he he did this thing where he had a um, a plasma particle um, camera, <laughs> and he did the exact same experiment except he used people in a circle and some incense in the center. And what he was taking was pictures of the incense as it rose. And you know, you ever seen it? it was so, it's so beautiful to watch. He would have all this circle think of us, peace. And he would not have them think of it, but he would have them embody it. And he would give them some time to call it out, peace, peace, and drop into it. And he took the photos. I'm going to tell you, I saw these photos with getting ready for this. They bring tears to my eyes. It reminds me that we are forming our own reality every nanosecond. We are calling our reality to us. We are calling our angels to us. They were beautiful. They, you know, we saw the, the crystals of the water were pretty flat and two-dimensional. These were sculptural. And they were multi-dimensional. Sometimes they looked like a Buddha. I could see a Buddha in it. And you could see maybe there were organs in it. I don't know, but it, you could see within the smoke. And it was perfectly symmetrical. And he did this with maybe 20 words. And the more I looked at it, the more I saw. One looked like a red fox to me. <laughs> um, but they, they vibrated something within me to remind me that what I say matters. That we are creating in this moment now. We have called the angels. The angels are here. If you have just a space to allow it, you get all the help you need. We aren't meant to be here for um, trauma and drama and, and heartache. We are meant to be here for joy. And although we have things that we have to meet, we don't have to stay there. So I have quite a few friends here and some that have recently let their beloved ones walk with them, let them go. I just know without question they're here. And that they will be a part of you because in the quantum field, you can be so many places all at once. So in the other room, for those that have walked their loved ones home, all we have to do is look. In, in, if it was dark and we looked out that window, we would see a reflection of us and we would see outside and we would know that's how it is, just in the other room. So for all the angels, we just want to connect to the light. We want to plug in. We want to be a, um, a receiver, a receptive a channel. Um, we want to be a channel of good. So doing things like coming to this center to hear the word, the word will change you if you allow it to come in. Not only here, but land in the body. So beautifully. I have one more story. And um, actually, I just want to do this. Um, you know, during 9-1-1, uh, it was such a horrible time. And um, there were legions of angels. <laughs> that were called that day. And we all have still struggled with that. There's sometimes some something that happens that's so hard. And um, a lot of people were devastated in New York, and they didn't know what to do. And I remember the story of one man that was cleaning up, and it was a bunch of volunteers. 
And he was just having a hard time even. He was just, he was wrecked. And someone came over and put their arm around him. And they said, they said, do you know Mr. Rogers? And he goes, well, yeah. And he said, this is what you need to do. Look for the helper. Mm-hmm. Look for the helpers, you guys. They are here for you, easily called to you. I don't know how it is, but we get to spend time with each other today. And as you leave today, whatever your vibration is, you will spread everywhere you go. And uh, it can't get better than that. For a, for a closing today, um, I pulled a, a, a poem. It's not the whole poem because it's quite long, but John O'Donoghue is someone I talk about probably every time I come here. Um, he was an Irish priest, but really an Irish poet and philosopher. And um, I'm going to ask you, if you will, close your eyes because he gives the most beautiful blessing. This is the blessing, and it's for you because you are angels too. A blessing of angels. May the angels in their beauty bless you. May they turn you towards your streams of blessing. May the angel of awakening stir your heart to come alive to the eternal within you to all the invitations that quietly surround you. And may all the angels be your shelter and your joyful guardians. Placing that in your heart, knowing that that gift is for you.